we want to consider the acceleration for a minute. It turns out the acceleration can be broken out into a part that is tangent to the curve and a part that is normal to the curve. In fact, a part that is in the direction that you're turning. And here's how to see that. If you think about the velocity, the velocity is a vector, right? So every ve vector consists of a direction and a magnitude. Now the direction is the unit tangent, right? Because the unit tangent points in the same direction as the velocity. And the magnitude of the velocity is the speed. So you could always take the velocity and write it as its length times its direction, right? Which in this case is the unit tangent. So we have a product of two things, the product of a scalar with a vector. And we want to look at um, the acceleration, right? The acceleration would be the derivative of velocity with respect to time. And by the product rule, that would be the derivative with respect to time of the speed. Um, times the tangent plus um, the speed times the derivative of the tangent with respect to time. So now the derivative of the tangent with respect to time is actually related to the normal vector, right? To find the normal vector, we took the derivative of the unit tangent with respect to time and um, we divided by the length of the derivative of the unit tangent with respect to time. So that means we could solve this equation for the derivative of the tangent with respect to time. It's the length of the derivative of the tangent with respect to time times the unit normal. Okay, now also this is not the first time we've seen the derivative, uh, the, the length of the derivative of the tangent with respect to time. We've also seen it in our formula for computing kappa. Because when we computed kappa, we took the length of the derivative of the tangent with respect to time and we divided by the speed. So the length of the derivative of the tangent with respect to time is equal to the curvature kappa times the speed. Okay, let's use all those things. So let's see, let me put one more thing together. That Now the derivative of the unit tangent with respect to time is equal to this length of the derivative, which we figured out is kappa times the speed times the unit normal n. Let's take all that and put it in here, and we'll see that the acceleration is the derivative with respect to time of the speed times the unit tangent, plus it is, um, let's see, the speed times kappa times the speed times the unit normal. So we're gonna, we can write that as we've got a kappa, we've got a speed and another speed, so we have speed squared d unit tangent dt. Oh, whoops, not d unit tangent dt. I meant to, we replaced this d unit tangent dt with kappa speed and n. That's how we got the kappa speed squared n. Well, I wish I hadn't done that, but anyway. Um, the speed, we've also noticed that the speed is equal to um, ds dt. So this is going to be the derivative of the speed then would be the derivative of, of ds dt with respect to t. So that would be ds dt squared times the unit tangent. And then we have kappa speed squared times the unit normal. If you look at it, what we're saying is that the acceleration has basically two pieces. A piece that's in the tangent direction, we'll call this coefficient, which is d, d squared s dt squared, a sub t, the, the component of acceleration in the tangential direction, and we'll call this a sub n, the component of the acceleration in the normal direction. So all acceleration um, is a combination of a part that is in the tangential direction and notice that this is this is basically um, change in the speed, right? This is speeding up or slowing down. That's in the direction of motion, in the direction of travel. This is coming from turning, right? This part of the acceleration is perpendicular to the curve. This is the part of the acceleration that's actually causing um, causing our tangent vector to turn. So this is the acceleration due to turning. Notice that it depends on how curvy the curve is, but also on how fast you're going along that curve. So for example, if you have you could you need a lot of normal acceleration if you have a tight curve, which would be high curvature, right? Um, 
Or if you're trying to go around a curve very quickly, you're going to need a lot of normal force. In fact, it goes as the square of the speed. So you may have noticed when you're driving, if, if you need to, to take a 90 degree turn, you have to slow down quite a bit in order to be able to take that turn. Otherwise, you feel a lot of normal force, right? The car wants to come up on two wheels if you go too fast. And it doesn't take too much extra speed to get into trouble quickly because the amount of um, normal acceleration that you need is not proportional to the speed, but to the speed squared. Okay, so if you doubled the speed, then speed squared would quadruple, right? So if you go twice as fast around this curve, you need four times the normal acceleration. Okay, well let's look at now techniques for calculating a sub t and a sub n. Now a sub t actually wouldn't be that bad to get because all you'd have to do is starting from your parameterization, find the velocity, then find the length of the velocity, then take the derivative with respect to t. That's pretty easy to do usually. Right. One derivative um, one derivative to get the velocity, um, then some kind of square root, right, to get the length of the velocity, and then another derivative. It shouldn't, that shouldn't be too bad. So a sub t shouldn't be too bad to get. Now a sub n, you definitely don't want to go, th usually I don't think anyway, unless it's like a circle, you don't want to go through the trouble of calculating kappa. That's going to be a pain. Remember to find kappa, we had to find the unit tangent, we had to take its derivative, we had to find its length, and then divide by the speed it's probably not worth it to find kappa, although unless kappa is obvious, right? Let's, um, let's avoid that. Now, it's also um, pretty easy to find the acceleration. So that gives us an idea for finding a sub n. Whatever the acceleration is, it has a part that is along the curve. That's a sub t times the unit tangent and a part that's perpendicular to the curve. So here's the acceleration. It has a, it's, it's part tangential, right? And part normal. So by the Pythagorean theorem, if we, the length of this side squared, since these are perpendicular to each other, right? The unit tangent and the unit normal are perpendicular, then we have a right triangle here. The length of this side is the, is the magnitude of the acceleration. So the magnitude of the acceleration squared should be equal to um, the length of this. Since that has length 1, the length is really just a sub t. Right? So we have a sub t squared plus a sub n squared. And this gives us an equation that e we can e easily solve for a sub n. a sub n is going to be the square root of the magnitude of the acceleration squared. So the magnitude of the acceleration squared minus a sub t squared. So this is usually the best way to find a sub t and a sub n. You find the velocity, you find the speed, then you take the derivative of the speed with respect to time, then you have a sub t. You've already found the velocity, so you take one more derivative to find the acceleration, and then you find the length of the acceleration squared. You subtract a sub t squared, having already found a sub t, and then take the square root and you get a sub n. That's usually the most efficient way to find those two components.